All right, we've had several emails on people asking tips and, and the way to rig some of our swim baits. Uh, so we figured we'd do a, do a quick video on how to rig some of the various swim baits uh, from the Convict to the newer Weedless Gizzard Chads and some people have even asked about some of the lime throughs. Uh, and we're gonna do the proper way of rigging it and plus a couple of little tips that'll kind of help with hookup ratio. First one will be the Convict. This one has been popular and like I said, it's one we've had out for oh, three or four years now. It has a split belly. Like I said, it's a seven inch weedless bait. Like I said, most people have, have seen it by now. Uh, we recommend the 10 aught owner beast hook. Now what I will do, because if you don't put a little bit of weight on it, it'll ride really high and come to the top of water and you have to reel it really, really, really slow. So I'll take a little bit of lead weight. You can either use the storm suspend strips that come like this and two or three of those will do it. Or you can take lead golf tape. Now this is to me easier and cheaper. So this is what I use. I keep a roll of this in the boat. You can get a whole roll of it for six or seven dollars. Whereas these little things are, I don't know, at least that much for, for a little pack of them. So what I'll do with these is I'll just take and tear off about that much. And this stuff has, just like the suspense strips, it has the adhesive backing. Take, peel that off. Just take and stick it on your shank of your hook where it kind of, there's a flat part there. Just stick it on there. And you'll just start rolling it. And you want to roll it as tight as you can get it. So it doesn't slide up or down the hook. So once you get that, you just take your convict. And if you're using an owner that has a centering pin, you can use it as a guide. If you're using something else that doesn't, like a trocar that doesn't have a centering pin, it's a little harder, but with the centering pin, it's really easy. Just take and poke it right in the middle of the nose. See how it just sticks right in the middle of the nose. You'll just take and twist. Until it goes all the way flush against the nose of the bait. Now, what I will do is I'll take and put my thumb where the bend of the hook is, and I'll line up my finger on top of the bait to give me a reference point of where I need to come through here and where I need to come through here. And what I'll do is I'll take and fold the bait, and like I said, it's got that belly slot, and I'll go straight up, right to where my finger was sitting. You go straight out the top. Now, when I do that, I'll take and just skin hook it. Now, sometimes if I'm not fishing really, really thick stuff, I'll leave that right there. Now, if I'm fishing thick stuff, like pad stems and really heavy grass and alligator weed, I'll stick it in there just like that. Now, some of the issues you will have if you do not rig this bait correctly is you'll cause it to, to tear out easier. Now, and one of the ways to do it is you see some people will not go far enough back. They'll take and rig it to where they're coming out way too far forward and they're stretching the, the nose of the bait like that. And it causes pressure constantly on the nose of that bait. And what you'll also see is sometimes people will go way back here to the back and rig it. And they'll end up curving the bait or making the bait crooked by going too far back. See how it kind of puts a, a curve in the bait to where that's not gonna run straight. So like I said, you just measure it with your thumb and your finger, and I'll go straight up through that, and it'll run true. 
the seven inch wheelless gizzard shad is very much the same way uh, it's a 12 aught owner beast hook is what's recommended for it now same thing it's got the centering pin you can stick it right in that little there's a little circle right there in the nose of the bait you stick it in there and start twisting you twist it right all the way in until the nose is flush against the eye of that hook <clears throat> now this is even a little bit easier because like I said this this shad was designed around this hook you put your thumb there your finger there and you see where it's going to need to come out you take open up that it's got a split belly too open up that belly see where it's going to come through and I'll take and go straight up like I said don't try to curve it up just go straight perpendicular to the bait you come straight out the back now I'll take open that make sure it sits around the weight that weight should sit right in there now what I will do with this 12 out hook and I've already done it with this one is I'll take and move my plastic out of the way you can do it before or after you put the bait on I like to do it after that way I can get it laying just right I'll take and actually open this hook up just a little bit it doesn't take much because if you don't this hook point will actually be pointing down into the plastic a little more than I like I like to open it up just a tiny bit you're not you're not gonna weaken the hook and it's, it's still gonna be fine but when you run your finger across there that, that hook sticks it so like I said same way you can take and skin hook it like said, and that bait is completely straight it's not kinked it's not pulling on the nose S same issues can can happen is you, know, you get it pulling on the nose or get it bunched up it's not gonna run right on you and it's gonna tear up easier so that's how you rig the seven inch on a 12 aught. The five inch is exactly the same way. Uh, it's got the belly belly slot. You use a six aught owner beast to it. We've had some questions on line throughs. We take it for granted that you know people know how to rig you know, both weedless and line throughs and know how to set them up. Uh, that's not the case. There's, you know, a lot of people are really getting into swim baits um, as beginners and you know, it's new to them. So things that we've been doing for years and we take for granted that, that we know is not necessarily common knowledge. So this is how you rig. Like I said, you can, this kind of applies to a lot of different line throughs, but this in particular is how you rig the bluegill and our gizzard chat line throughs. Our line throughs will have, all of our line throughs will have a plastic tube that runs inside a tin insert and the tube comes out the belly. So it goes in the nose, out the belly. Now we use tin for the biggest reason that it's not going to discolor your baits like some of the cheaper lead inserts. You know, everybody that has had a bunch of swim baits has had uh, swim baits in their tackle box for a few months and they go to get them out to fish them and this whole part of it has turned white and weird looking uh, that's not going to happen with these so you're just going to take your line run it in that nose hole out the belly now, the line throughs will come with a owner stinger treble hook and I'm just going to tie a quick knot And normally I would wet that and cinch it down and make sure it's good, but since we're just rigging it and not fishing it, we're not gonna worry about it too much. Okay, so you gotta pull your line, like I said, from your this like I said, this will be going to your rod. So you take and you'll take one of these points on this hook and you'll Stick it inside the belly of this bluegill right in front of that fin there. 
You'll get it in there just like that. And you see how the rest of that hook just nestles right between those fins right there. And that's the way that was made to do that. You see, what I like to do is, you know, take it a little step further is see how I did it with this point is in line. There's one, there's one point that's going to be in line with your hook point, with your eye. You know, hook point and eye are going to be in line with each other. I like to use that one because you can take and set that, that split ring right there and that lays exactly flat in line with the bait and then you have these two on the bottom. Like I said, that's not absolutely necessary but to me it, it makes for a cleaner rigging and for a true running bait. Okay, so when this fish hits it, he's going to grab it and that's going to come loose and the bait's going to be able to slide up and down the line. So that's how you do it. If you, if you don't get this far enough back right there in front of that fin, if you hook it up in here, you're going to put a lot of unnecessary strain on the nose of the bait and the insert. So stick it as far back as you can right there in front of that fin. Like I said, it'll nestle right between there. That helps it kind of run straight and helps hide the hook as well. The gizzard chat is very, very similar. Like I said, it's got the same insert system. Just take and run that right through there, right out. Like I said, that will go to your rod. Same thing, I will look and see which one of my points is in line. I'll try to use that one. And I'll go same way, straight in front of that fin right there. And try to get it as centered as you can. You'll add a lay right between those fins. Just like that. Like I said, same way, everything's in line with that bottom. You have these two hanging down. That's how you rig the line through gizzard shed. Now we've received several emails over the last few weeks uh, with some durability issues with some of the gizzard shad, uh, some of the convicts, and we did some digging and did some looking and we traced it back to a bad 55 gallon drum of plastic that we received from a manufacturer that wasn't mixed correctly. Um, all we can think is, like I said, you know, stuff happens like that. Um, hate that it happened. Uh, we've been trying to take care of people. Uh, we And the problem they were having is, you know, they were having problems with the screw locks pulling out of the baits you know, just casting, which should never happen. Um, we've got that completely under control. We've we've got a, our manufacturer has assured us that he's reformulated everything. It's actually going to be more durable than the original intended formula. Uh, we're going to start pulling sample batches. You know, before they go out the door, we're going to get random baits and test them to make sure that everything stays consistent. Like I said, we don't. We hate that that happened. We don't want it to ever happen again. Uh, it's not going to be an issue going forward. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, that's not going to pull out casting. As you can, as you can see, it's, there's not a durability issue there. Uh, Convict's going to be the same way. So if you did have a problem in the past, you can rest assured that that's not going to be an issue going forward. So, like I said, 
we figured out. And like I said, we traced it back to 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 a isolated incident. Not going to happen again. Um, just be assured that anything you get from us, like I said, we're going to do our best to make it right. Uh, just thank you for watching, and check us out at smashjackbaits.com, and check us out on Instagram and Facebook.